The Game and Fish Department has employed walleye tagging studies as an investigative tool for years. Today we are visiting with Fishery Supervisor Scott Gangle on that topic with a twist. This year, for the first time, fisheries personnel are tagging walleyes in a collaborative effort on four different lakes across the state in hopes of gaining broader insight into how anglers are utilizing these fisheries. And then we will take you to Coal Lake near Underwood, where fishery supervisor Dave Frieda and crew are beginning the walleye tagging process. I'm Mike Anderson with the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. So this year, uh, staff in four of our district offices are taking walleye in four lakes across the state. We're targeting Coal Lake uh, up near Underwood, uh, West Lake Napoleon, Twin Lake down by Lemoore, and Lake Cove, which is south of Devil's Lake. Just walleye. Uh, these, are, these are some of our newer prairie lakes that are very productive and have been showing some good fishing in recent years, and so anglers are targeting them. We expect that if fish are biting again this summer, anglers are going to target some of those fish. And, and catch some of those tagged fish. Tagging studies are something that we typically use on a lake by lake basis. Say one biologist might have a question on a particular lake and say, I want to tag fish this year on this lake because I want to know what's going on in my lake. Uh, starting this year, this is the first time that we've had a collaboration on a statewide level, and this is the first year of what we expect to be a several years of, of this sort of tagging in the future. And so we've got all of our staff um, collaborating this year on these multiple lakes to kind of get a broader picture of what's going on around the state, not just on a lake to lake or a lake specific basis, but on a broader statewide basis. For, for what we're uh, targeting from this collaboration is going to be one year's at each lake. So it's going to be a one year study. The guys will tag the fish this year and then they'll um, collect tag returns from anglers over the course of the next year. And that'll give us an estimate of, of angler harvest and exploitation for the year. And then next year, we'll likely go in and take fish at other lakes and, and we'll select some new lakes based on conditions in the future. And, and so we'll do this over, over several years and, and, and get a bigger, bigger data set put together from various lakes. Typically when we tag fish, what we're looking for is um, anglers report those tags to us and we get estimates of mortality from that. Uh, exploitation, which is what percentage of the population is being harvested by anglers. Sometimes if we do a multi-year study, we can get estimates of total mortality of the fish population, which is uh, angler exploitation plus natural mortality. Uh, in some cases, it gives us the ability to estimate population size. We can go into some of our netting surveys and look for tagged fish from those surveys and get estimates of population size, which combined with some of the exploitation estimates, we can get estimates of total harvest, the number of fish being taken out of a lake by anglers. Um, it gives us some indication based on the reports from anglers, uh, whether fish are being released, um, what, what proportion of these fish are being harvested versus released. So catch and release is a big deal in, in some of these fisheries. And so we get a lot of that kind of information from it. Um, on these smaller lakes, movements aren't that informative, but on some of the bigger lakes, if we're doing a tagging study, say on Lake Sakakawea, which we have in the past, we get really good movement information and things like that too. Typically what our staff do is they'll, they'll pick a lake that they think might be a good candidate for a tagging study. And they're looking for a lake that they expect some fishing to occur, some harvesting to, to occur. You know, the fish, they want the fish to bite so that anglers catch them. That's our, that's our goal in any of our fisheries. We want anglers to catch those fish. So they target a lake where they think that's gonna happen. That doesn't always, isn't always the case. And so, um, they pick these lakes based on, on potential, but they may not bite, they may not catch a lot of these fish and stuff. So by, by including a lot of lakes around the state, that gives us a little bit better potential of getting a, a diversity of returns. They're all targeting from 500 to 1,000 fish to tag. It depends on how quick and easy or how, how fast the fish are to coming into our nets and how easy they are to tag. So our numbers are gonna vary from lake to lake, but that's kind of our goal. It's, it's based on you know the total number of tags that we need to get out there to get enough back to, to um, provide a scientifically defensible estimate of, of exploitation. Today we're at uh, Coal Lake, just east of Underwood, North Dakota. Um, we're 
This is the first day we're starting a tagging study for the summer season of 2024. So uh, we're tagging walleyes with metal jaw tags and um, we're looking to see how anglers are utilizing this population in the next couple of years, um, looking at exploitation and survival of these fish and, and how anglers are are able to utilize this good resource. Uh, Coal Lake is it's had a history of periodic winter kills. When we can string together enough winters without winter kill, it'll, it'll produce a really nice fishery, and it did that back in the teens. And then we had a complete winter kill in 2019. And so it was restocked in 2019, and we've strung together a series of good winters, and these fish have grown really well. There's a lot of fish up to 22, 23 inches uh, in good condition. Uh, there's a lot of forage. They haven't bit well up until this you know, the last year they started going on a bite a little bit. So uh, we're fortunate enough that they've grown really well in the five seasons they've grown and we have several year classes and last year they reproduced naturally on their own for the first time. So uh, we got a good population. It's a perfect time to take a look at, at how anglers are benefiting from the population. We really rely on anglers to report these tags and it's really important that anglers, if you do catch a, a tagged fish, to report it. You could report it on our, on our website. We had a, a tag reporting form that you can just go to our website, fill that out. That's historically been what a lot of people do. They'll fill out that form and, and click submit. Starting this year, our online services folks set up a new tag reporting um, deal in your account. If you go to where you buy your licenses and stuff in my account, you don't have to enter your name and address and all that. All you got to do is say, I caught a tagged fish, put in the tag number and where you caught it and click submit and, and you'll get some information back on the fish that you submit that way. Or you can, you can stop by one of our district offices or call on the phone and report it that way. So there's really a lot of different ways to make it as easy as possible for anglers to return those tags. We're, we're studying how people treat these fisheries and stuff. So if you plan on harvesting a fish, harvest it and that's fine. If you're planning on releasing fish, release it, you know, just treat it like you would normally treat it. So that way we can um, get the information back to know whether um, these fish are being harvested at a, at a higher number or, or being released at a greater number. Um, every, every bit of that information is important to us. We encourage people to return these tags and, and report them whenever they catch them and wherever they catch them. We've got tagged fish that are swimming in Lake Sakakawea from past tagging studies and that still provides us with good information. We've got we've had tagging studies in, in other smaller lakes um, in the past in Lake Sakakawea, Lake Oahe, so we've got quite a few tagged fish out there right now. Our, our philosophy in, in, for fishing regulations across North Dakota is to keep it as simple as possible and we don't want to over-regulate. A lot of the, the smaller lake, individual lake studies have shown that our statewide regulations are appropriate for those smaller lakes, meaning that we don't have excessive exploitation, people aren't harvesting more fish than, than what the lake can provide. And so what we'd like to do is look at it on a statewide scale and say, is our statewide fishing regulation for walleye, which is five fish daily limit, we don't have very many length limits on walleye across the state, are our current regulations effective on a statewide basis? These uh, studies like this tell us whether, whether fishing exploitation is high or low, and they tell us whether um, some places we have more catch and release than others. Uh, we have a, quite a diversity of, of angler demographics across the state too. Some areas of the state see more non-resident traffic, some areas have more local traffic, some areas have residents that travel long distance, there's more of a more people traveling to go to these places. And so with that diversity of anglers across the state, we wanted to get a bigger picture and, and see if, if from one area to the other, if things are consistent in terms of our fishing quality and our regulations and whether they're appropriate to meet the needs of all of our lakes across the state and not just some of our lakes. Our, our new prairie lakes that we've developed over the last few years have been very productive and they've become very popular with anglers and so that's kind of where we're starting. But we may, as, as this develops, as more staff in other areas have time, you know, we don't have a lot of new prairie lakes, say in the southwest, but we have some very popular reservoirs like Harp Butte or Patterson and some of those. We may include some of those in future studies and get some tags out in some of those areas just to 
again, get that broader picture of, of statewide fishing dynamics for walleye across the state and whether our exploitation is sustainable in these places or whether, whether new regulations are, are, are something that we need to look at or whether we can stick with our current regulations. Those are the sorts of things that we're going to get from this study and uh, um, it may include a, a wide variety of, of lakes across the state.